Mr. Speaker and Representative Dreskowski, and thanks for the question because I think it uh, allows us to look a little bit at the difference between weather and climate, weather being the daily fluctuations and climate being the change in our weather patterns over time or the uh, looking at weather over a longer period of time is climate. You know, I have some references here if you'd be interested. Um, I had the Legislative Reference Library uh, look for some uh, reports on climate change and potential impacts um, from either government institutions or scientific institutions, some of the national academies, um, and also uh, international government institutions. And so, I, you know, I've got some reports here from the no National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the United States Department of Defense, the National Academies of Science, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the Minnesota Climate Change Advisory Group, that's the one Governor Pawlenty uh, set up, the National Research Council of the National Academies, the Committee on National Security, the, Na uh, the National Research Council of the National Academies, the United States Geological Survey, the National Assessment Synthesis Team of the U.S. Global Change Research Program, and then the Stern Review. That's more of an economic one from the British government, but I thought it could provide some useful information. Um, and the titles of these reports, some of them, we've got Climate Change 2001, so Representative Pepin, um, the, the major government institutions and scientific institutions call, call this uh, change climate change. It is more accurate. Um, I can talk about a little bit about that as we go on, but we have the scientific basis, impacts, adaptation, and vulnerability, um, mitigation of climate change, climate change impacts on the United States. Um, we have effects of climate change on agriculture, land resource, water resource, and biodiversity in the United States, potential impacts of climate change on the U.S. transportation system. Um, we have national security implications of climate change for the U.S. naval force, so our military is really looking into this. Um, so these are some really useful resources in terms of how governments around the world are responding to climate change and the various scientific organizations, um, all of the scientific organizations, uh, true professional organizations of science, um, coming together to talk about the impacts of climate change. I do have, I was, I was trying, quite frankly, uh, Representative Treskowski to find some government reports or some reports from uh, scientific organizations to say that climate change really isn't a problem and we don't really need to be worrying about it. There's not much we could do. I was unable to find any. Um, I did get this report delivered to my office, Seven Theories of Climate Change, um, which some of you may have seen. This is uh, published by the Heartland Institute. Um, some of you may know the Heartland Institute, but they are uh, not a scientific organization, nor a government organization. Um, I brought their website up uh, just so we could understand who the Heartland Institute is, because frankly, they're the only organization that I could find publishing scientific looking reports, but not really scientific reports. Um, and the uh, Heartland Institute is set up for free market solutions. It's a national nonprofit research and education organization with offices in Chicago and Washington. Their mission is to, quote, discover, develop, and promote free market solutions to social and economic problems. Um, so not necessarily deva devoted to finding the best information about the scientific basis of climate change or what our government should do to address it and some of the solutions we could have. So that's just to give you some background about um, the, the sources that I've been looking at, all these materials. You can feel free to come over and check these out if you'd like to or, or check out the pamphlet from the Heartland Institute. Um, but in terms of the sci what, what we can expect from climate change, when we say global warming, it's, it, it sounds like it's just heating, the temperature's going up. When you're talking about global warming, you're talking about putting more heat into the atmosphere. So you have more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it acts like a blanket, you're putting more heat in the atmosphere. And when you think about heat, don't think about the temperature you feel, whether it feels warm or hotter. Think about a, a boiling pot of water. And when that gets really hot, you start seeing all sorts of activity. And that, that, members, is what I'm really concerned about in Minnesota. When you start seeing all that energy moving around in hotter environments, um, you start seeing things like more flooding, uh, more catastrophic rain events leading to flooding. I know many members have, have felt the impacts of increased flooding in their district. You'll also see the impacts of increased tornadic activity. 
You know, we saw down in the southern part of this country this year. You can't you can't link any individual weather event to climate change, but it's the general pattern. You know, we we saw record-breaking uh, tornadic activity down in the southern United States this year, and I think. That's something Minnesotans could expect to see more. And those are both, I think, problems we should really be concerned about, both flooding and increased extreme uh, storms like, like the ones we saw down in the southern United States. We look at flooding in the Mississippi, which may be increasing our, our gas costs again because of the, the refineries that are being impacted by the current floods going down the Mississippi. Um, these are the sort of things that would become more common. You can't say any single one of these events is going to happen absolutely related to climate change, but I think the overall impact of those on people's lives and the cost to both our businesses and our government institutions are a really a big deal and something we should be concerned about. So that, that Representative Druskowski would be uh, some of the impacts I think we could see here in Minnesota. Representative Druskowski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Knuth, uh, for that long list of um, organizations that uh, I still didn't discover uh, from what you presented uh, what type of change in our climate we may anticipate. Um, maybe, Representative Knuth, if you'd yield again, um, I'd have a more specific question that might be uh, even easier to answer, and that is, uh, Exactly when could we anticipate the 20-foot tall snow bank in the or snow pile in the Sears parking lot to evaporate or to, to melt and then evaporate, Representative Knuth? Representative Knuth will yield. Representative Knuth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Dreskowski, and thank you for the question. Again, we're talking about specific weather events this winter. You're right, has been uh, one of the snowier winters we've seen in Minnesota. Um, Increased energy in the atmosphere, actually one of the, the things that we expect with increased energy in the atmosphere is more moisture in the atmosphere, which in uh, more northern parts of our world would make more snow likely. So extra snow is consistent with climate change, but that said, Representative Troiskowski, you know, I hope you, I know you're trained, uh, you're an agriculture, have an agriculture background. Um, you know, I think farmers understand basic climate patterns over time, but they know every year the weather can do different things to their crops. And this year in Minnesota, we, we had a particularly snowy window. winter. That over time is consistent with climate change. Um, but this specific year, you know, you can't say exactly whether or not it's climate change. Representative Draskowski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Knuth. Uh, well, uh, we heard it, members. We don't know when the 20-foot tall snow pile over in the Sears parking lot uh, that exists on May 11th, the 153rd anniversary of our state, um, is going to exist or is going to go away. Members, let me remind you, we're in the middle of May. Two out of the last four years have represented the latest date in, his in recorded history that the barge has gone up the Mississippi River. It seems it's getting colder, and I heard a little bit in Representative Knuth's uh, response there to suggest maybe we are uh, heading towards uh, global cooling and uh, more snow. Uh, and I think the last snow happened on the 28th of April, um, but maybe we'll look, be looking at jo June snowfalls soon. I'm, I'm not really certain. But uh, uh, back to the amendment, Representative Falk, again, thank you for bringing the amendment. Uh, it seems no one can tell us exactly how the climate is going to change in Minnesota. And I become uh, increasingly perplexed at uh, the efforts, not only currently, but uh, the past efforts to place policy in our statutes uh, that revolve around this nebulous term called climate change, uh, of which no one can predict how it's going to change or what it's going to do. Um, I think this is the wrong direction for us to go, be going. Uh, we need to stop this behavior. Uh, we need to stop the additional mandates in, in favor of uh, these nebulous terms. Uh, they are costing our businesses and our, our people in Minnesota millions of dollars per year because of these policies. Not only can they not afford the additional costs that these policies are bringing, they cannot afford the additional government that we are bringing, that we are find, having to find a way to pay for. They cannot pay more money for this government Members, not a penny more. Representative Knuth was on the list to be next. Uh, Representative Knuth. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you, Representative Drozkowski, for those comments. Um, I think, first one, I want to make sure that I was not suggesting that global cooling is what is happening at all. I think, uh, you know, members on uh, trying to undermine the uh, clarity of every single National Academy of Science and every single government report on climate change coming out, uh, like to point back to a 1970s Time magazine cover. If you know the science at all, you know one of the authors of that study, like a good scientist, took in the evidence and, and realized that that initial report from 30, or, well, 40 years ago um, was not the end all and be all of the climate science. And now you've got uh, plenty of reports and, and Representative Dreskowski, I'm happy to share them with you. Uh, members, I would hope you would support um, the Falk Amendment. I think it's clear that uh, the scientific consensus is that global, uh, that global climate change is happening and that humans are contributing to it. We're still working out all the details of what's going to happen on the ground in every single part, place, part of the, the earth, but I think the overall uh, agreement is that the evidence shows that climate change is happening and, and humans are contributing to it. And, you know, members, when you talk about, about uh, science, I think it's really important to, to distinguish how we talk about it. A lot of times on this House floor we say, I feel, or I think, or I believe. When we talk about science, we're talking about the evidence. The evidence shows that climate change is happening. The evidence shows that humans are contributing to uh, global climate change. And I think if you were to talk to any climate scientists uh, working today, that's the way they would talk about it, that that's, this is what the evidence shows. It's not what they believe. It's not what they feel. It's not what they think. That's not the way science works. Science takes on evidence, and it looks for the uh, descriptions of the world that best match that evidence. So just asking for a little, um, a little, being a little careful about when we talk about the evidence of climate change rather than talking about what we think or feel or, or believe about it. Um, and members, this is, is going to be a big challenge for our state in many ways, and I think Representative Falk's amendment looking at our economy, including agriculture, forestry, and tourism, when, when, our, when our climate is changing in ways that, that are different than the ones we've developed to be accustomed to and the ones we've developed our patterns and processes and infrastructure to be accustomed to, it's going to cause some problems for our state and problems that we need to address here at the legislature and, and, and many other places. So I would hope that you would support the Falk Amendment. I think it's a great amendment and uh, one that I think takes a strong stand from this body that, that Minnesotans are really on the front lines willing to take on one of the biggest challenges of the 21st century.